Dear God, our hearts are broken for this world. The hatred is palpable, the division undeniable, and the pain runs deep. We desperately need more of you. We ask for your truth to be louder than the noise which surrounds us. For your mercy to be stronger than the voices of oppression. For your strength to overpower those who seek to do harm. Where there is division, bring unity. Where there is anger, bring peace. Where there is evil, bring victory. Empower us to fulfill your mission, to answer your calling, to be the light you've created us to be. May your love, your grace, and your mercy flood this world. We love you. We seek you. We place our hope in the mighty name of Jesus. This we pray. I got this little lid in my hand because I'm, I'm just fidgety. I don't know why I'm fidgety, but I am fidgety this morning. Um, <clears throat> as you guys know, we missed church about three weeks, and we had this whole thing when COVID first started. My biggest fear was, is on the news they said, if you're like have comorbidities, and if you're African American, COVID gonna hit you pretty hard. And I was like, oh my God, I'm fat and I'm black. I'm going to die if I get COVID. <laughs> but I got COVID, did not realize that I had COVID. Um, if you were here at the student takeover, the week before student takeover, I had a sore throat. I had a headache. Um, actually, Saturday, was it Saturday night? I said, Quentin manages me, and I said, I don't feel like performing, brother. I'm tired. Not realizing that I had COVID. Um, my, uh, my son, on Tuesday, he started running a fever. I didn't realize he was running a fever. That's how great of a dad that I am. My wife had to work the night before she came home. She said, where's our son? I said, he's upstairs watching TV. He's quiet. Let's leave him alone. Came downstairs. He had a one, I think, 100 point something temp. Got him to the pediatrician. His temp shot up to 100.3 um, within 20 minutes. It was scary, but God's still good. That whole time I'm blaming myself. My wife's like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. She was like, you may have not even done it. When my wife lost her taste and smell, she said, look what you did to us. I said, dang, you switched up real quick, didn't you? But we are doing good. We're happy to be back. Um, I, I, thankfully, I, I'm ba- I guess I'm basically asymptomatic, which is, which is good for me, horrible for my family, because they all got symptoms except for me and Nakira. Um, but we are back, and we are excited to be here. I think the sinus infection I got after COVID was worse than my COVID experience. But, uh, but God is still good. And I was going to start on our new series entitled Summer Mixtape. But after watching everything that's happening in the world and after um, seeing so many sick people and my wife watching them in the ER, they have 16 to 20 hour waits right now. They have people that are in the waiting room on oxygen. They have people that are, that are you know, not making it. And then we have church members that are sick and they, they continue to more and more getting sick and, and it's hitting children and children, and, not children's, hitting children and it's hitting schools. And, and I'm sitting up here thinking, oh my goodness, Jesus, where is the, the, the where, where are you at? Where's the hope? And I had to be reminded that all those circumstances change, change our hope can't. And I began to sing this song because it was, I felt like God was like rewriting my sermon. I began to sing this song that I used to sing at an old church that I used to go to. And it's, my hope is built on nothing less. And it's a song written by Edward Mote. And he wrote it back in 1834 in the UK. He was a, a Baptist minister. And he was a Baptist minister for 26 years. He became this minister at the age of 29. He was the minister for 26 years at this church. And then he passed on. But when he first wrote this song, it did not have that, that catchy name as my hope is built on nothing less. That has so much power behind it, but he called it the immutable basis for a sinner's hope. And I was like, that's not exciting at all. Open up your hymns. We're going to sing the immutable basis of a sinner's hope. But as I studied it, I began to see where he came up with the whole concept. 
It was based off the scripture that we're going to be studying today in Matthew chapter 7. And it talks about the foolish builder and the wise builder. And he, he was trying to help people understand where their hope has to come from. And, and I love the refrain. And I wish that he would have put the, the refrain or the course first. Because it says this. It says, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. But verse 1 is so fitting because it almost fits with what we're going through right now in our society where it says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Can I tell you that the same blood that was shed on that cross is the same blood that can save us today? And he realized that in 1834, numerous of years after Christ had risen from the dead, went up to heaven, he realized that, and he sat there, and he read this parable, and he wrote one of the most powerful hymns that has ever been written, and he, read, he wrote hundreds more. But there's something so special about knowing that on Christ the solid rock, I will stand, and everything else is sinking sand. And Scott said something so pro prolific, so, so sound, something so strong. He said, the problem is the church and we need prayer. And the problem is this, is that we as the body of Christ, we've forgotten where we need to stand. We look at everything, but we forget Jesus. I was sitting there on Facebook and I saw this, this pastor or this company, and they had a picture up of this mega church pastor. And they said, grow your church just as quick as he did. And I, and I began to think, and I was like, the problem with us is this, is that we're focused on quantity, not quality. We're focused on making sure that there's enough people with their hands lifted up when we're worshiping, and we're not worried about if the song is changing their life. We're worried about making cliche statements in our sermon, and we're not worried about if the words are changing their life. We're worried about making sure that all the lights and the smoke and the sound and the production is working, and we're not worried about lives being changed. And we wonder why the church is sinking because we forgot Jesus and he's our solid rock. Imagine if Jesus was our solid rock in 2020 and 2021. We wouldn't be fighting the way we are. We would be a beacon of hope and not a beacon of division. If you look at the body of Christ, you see a lot of in-house fighting. And the reason why we're fighting is because people say that if I, if I get vaccinated, then, then, then I don't have faith. Or some people say if I get vaccinated, then, then, you know, I'm doing the wise thing or the smart thing. And some people say if I wear a mask and this. Some people say that if, if, if I pray this way or if, I, or if I vote this way or if I do this that way and if I do that that way. And we forgot that this place is not our home. We're worried about things that we should not be worried about. God put us here for a purpose. And it was the last thing that he said. He said, Go, preach, teach, and make more disciples. He didn't say go on Facebook and argue your opinion. I'm guilty of it up myself. Very guilty of it. I'll go on a Facebook post in a heartbeat. I'll be passive aggressive at the end. Basically, I say so many words, you're an idiot. God bless you. And then I wonder why my week is all torn up or my day is all torn up. It's because I forgot that I don't stand on my opinion. I forgot that I don't stand on numbers. I forgot that I don't stand on a vaccine or a mask. I forgot that I don't stand on fear. I forgot that I don't stand on how many people come to church or don't come to church. I forgot that I don't stand on if the screens are working or not working. I forgot that I don't stand on if the live stream is working or not working. I forgot that I don't stand on my job. I forgot that I don't stand on my income. I forgot that I don't stand on statistics. I forgot that I I'm supposed to stand on Jesus and him alone. See, we forgot that there is hope. And although the healthcare system is amazing, my wife, she's a nurse, and they are working their butts off, and I applaud them every single day. I pray for the first responders. I pray for people that have to go to work. I pray for people that, the, the EMS, the MTs, I pray for the nurses and the doctors and all that other kind of stuff. But see, my hope is not built on what they can do for me, because even if I take my last breath today, I still win. But that's only if my hope is built on Jesus Christ. That's only if my hope is built on Jesus Christ. Today, my prayer is this, is as we dive into the scripture, that our minds will not stand on the numbers I stand or the pandemic I stand on what I see I stand, but our minds and our hearts will go back to the mindset of on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Let's pray. Father God, as we dive into your word, I pray that our minds are clear, our ears are open, our hearts are receiving what you're speaking to them this morning, Father. God, I pray that today that I can shut up and stand back and you speak through me. God, I pray that as we dive into Isaiah chapter 40, God, 
that you shout into our lives, that you shout into our spirit, that you shout into our heart, that you are our hope. Not what we see, not what we think we know, but you are our hope. We give this moment to you. Speak to us, shape us, build us, and mold us. In your precious name, all God's children said, Amen. Amen. So we had an interesting three weeks. And I remember sitting there thinking, last week I was actually going to come back and I said, I'm going back to church. I was like, yeah, time to preach. And I'd made the stupid mistake of getting the COVID test, the at-home COVID test. We were in uh, Sam's Club and I saw a whole display. I said, let's grab a couple. I was like, let's, let's see how this thing is progressing. And we went to the very back corner of the Sam's Club parking lot because we thought, we don't want people seeing us taking a COVID test in the parking lot. That's weird. Not thinking is, what's even weirder is in the back of the parking lot taking a COVID test. So here's me and my wife shoving these straws up my, our nose and turning, or, or sticks or whatever, up our nose, and I'm turning them, and I'm crying. So now it looks like my wife is breaking up with me in the back parking lot of Sam's Club. And, and, I'm, and, and I, I turn it, take it out, do the other one, turn it. And I was like, I feel great. I'm good to go. That sucker popped up positive. Like, here's the thing about my COVID test that I took. The lines were darker than the example lines on the actual COVID test. I was like, I got super COVID. That's what I have. So I was like, ah, should I go or should I not? My wife said, well, we're probably still shedding the virus, so on and so forth. And so I called Quentin and I said, Quentin, you don't have to preach, brother. I can't come to church because if I still have COVID, there's no way that I need to be at the church where even if I'm still shedding, we don't know. He's like, but you're patient zero. Remember, you baptized everybody in COVID at the student takeover because I may or may have not thrown water on the crowd at student takeover, not knowing that I had COVID. But what I told them was this, is I did not have backwash because I fancy sipped. If you don't know what fancy sip is, let me show what fancy sip is. No. Take your pinky and... No backwash. So he was like, you gave everybody COVID. I said, you preach. But here's what happened. And you can ask my wife and you can ask Quentin. I had been feeling like a million bucks, but as soon as that positive test came up, every symptom known to man came to mind. I was like, so tired. I got to get home. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I was like... I'm feeling congested. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Everything hit me at one time. I was literally walking through Sam's Club like, yeah, I got my COVID test. I got my this. I got my that. I got my 300 packs of toilet paper. I'm ready to go. And all of a sudden, my mindset switched from I'm good to I'm dying like that. And in all of 3.3 seconds, my hope switched from I'm going to be at church tomorrow to well, Quentin, if I die tomorrow, you carry on with the, with the baton. You keep preaching the gospel, brother. It felt like I was on a horrible movie saying, Quentin, I love you and thank you for doing what you're doing, Quentin. But how many of us do that? We, 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 we're doing great and we go to church and, and Scott sings that perfect song and, and, and you get in the mood and, and, and maybe Ricky or Quentin preach this sermon and, and all of a sudden you're feeling it and then you leave the house of God from this place where God is just shouting to your life and into your heart that he's good and you believed it and then all of a sudden one thing happens and all of a sudden your hope is not built on Jesus, it's built on what you're going through and what you see. Isaiah 40, chapter, chapter 40, verse uh, 20, 29 through 30, it depicts this story. And it talks about, or it talks about King Hezekiah, I'm sorry, King Hezekiah, and it talks about how he's giving hope to Israel. And I always read Isaiah 40, and I always start at verse 31 where it says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And King Hezekiah, he read that or he wrote that, and he was encouraging the people of Israel because he knew they were about to go through a hard time. And we always read that scripture, and we're like, yeah, I'm going to get my strength back if I find my hope in the Lord. But if you go two scriptures before that, you see something else that he said. He says he gives strength in verse 39 to the weary and increases the power of the weak, even youth 
grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. And what he was saying at that moment is this. Even those who should have it all together, they get tired. Can I tell you that there's nothing wrong with having worry? If someone preaches that to you, don't listen to it. I'm a pastor and I worry frequently. If you talk to Scott or Quentin or Ricky, I promise you they'll tell you that they've had moments of worry in their life. But here's the thing that we have to do. We have to do what King Hezekiah said when he said, but those who hope in the Lord, we've got to come to that place in our life where we realize that my hope is not built on what I see. My hope is built on what I know. And when I reach that place in my life of realizing that God is still good, he does something to me. He gives me that strength, that renewed hope, that renewed everything. I remember... This week I went through the motions. I was at home and I was doing my whole COVID thing. And I said, I can't wait to be at church Sunday. And the more I studied and the more I focused on Christ and the more I listened to my worship music, the more hope I found. I actually took a couple of days and I got off of Facebook and I got off social media because I said, I've got to get away from the sand. My hope had to be rekindled. My hope had to be renewed. I can't act like sand doesn't exist. I cannot act like COVID doesn't exist. I can't act like death doesn't exist, but I can't forget that God is still good. So watch what happens right here in this scripture in Matthew 7, 24. It talks about the wise and the foolish builder. And in verse 24, and and, and I'm going to actually read these backwards. Actually, I'm going to start with verse 26, and I hope you don't mind. I know some people are like, you're taking the scriptures out of context. You got a problem with it, email me. My my email is quentin at northchurchrockmark.com. All right, but I want to start at verse 26, and I wish that he would have wrote it this way because he wrote it sort of kind of backwards in my opinion because he talked about the hope, then he talked about the destruction. But at verse 26, it says this, But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Verse 27, he says, The rain came down, and the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. See, what had happened was is the Bible has given us two different stories, and I wish he would have started with the sand because because he says he built his house on something that was not solid. So many of us were building our houses on things that aren't solid. For some of us, it may not be COVID. For some of us, it may not be, you know, it may not be jobs. It may not be finances. For some of us, it may be relationships. For some of us, we're building our hope on relationships with people, hoping that that would give us some peace, hoping that that would give us some joy, hoping that would give us some value. And then all of a sudden, when that person messes up or when that person lets us down, then all of a sudden our hope is lost. When my wife first said, Vince, you ain't getting kids COVID. Somebody else could have done it. Then when she said, Vince, you gave the kids COVID, I was like, boy, what happened to, I thought somebody, now I'm the, you did it. And that's what happens when you place your hope on fallible things. Fallible things let you down. If I place my hope on North Church, I promise you that my hope will be lost. And it's not because North Church is not a good church. It's an amazing church. I love everything about North. I love everyone that's at North. I love everyone that's not at North. I love North Church. But here's the reality, that tomorrow this building can crumble. But the thing is, is no matter whether this building is here tomorrow or not, God is still there. So I'm going to put my hope in something that's not going to let me down, something that's never going to go away. And and the thing is, is that when he said that he built his house on the sand, he said he built his house on circumstances. He built his house on things that will not last. He built his house on his fortune. He built his house on his clout. He built his house on his friendships. He built his house on his social media likes. He built his house on his bank account. He built his house on his perfect health. He built his house on his perfect marriage. He built his house on things that he saw. He did not build his house on something solid. And it said that when the rain came, And when the floods came, his house fell. North Church, the one thing that I did as a pastor that I should have never done is I built my hope on numbers. Over the past few weeks, I've been asking, how are we looking? How are we looking? I know the numbers have been down. And I've been looking, I've been saying, what is going on? And I got distracted and I got discouraged and God reminded me that it's not about who's there, but it matters that I'm there. And my, my, my hope was built on something that was not solid. 
But watch what happens here. I'm going to go back to Matthew 7, 24, and it says this. It says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and their words of hope and puts them into practice is like a wise man. And it says, who built his house on the rock. Verse 25, it says, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. See, here's the thing about this whole scripture is it talks about what happened. And if you look at the scripture, you see that the same thing happened to both of them. Nothing changed. See, it says in, in, in verse 26 and 27, it says the stream rose, the rain came down, and the winds blew and beat against that house. The same thing happened to both of them. But here's the thing that I've come to realize about this scripture, and I'm going to throw some Vinceology in it. I hope you don't mind, and if you do, I don't care. But watch what happens, and it's verse 2 of this song where it says this, When darkness veils its ugly face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. And I believe that if this was not just a parable, but it was an actual story, especially a story of today, especially with Edward Moat. I believe that he would be in that storm on that solid rock singing, on Christ the solid rock I stand. Because all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. See, can I tell you, Christians, body, family, we're going to go through the same thing that the non-saved go through because we live in the same world. We're going to have to face COVID. We're going to have to face death. We're going to have to face things that are happening in the world. We're going to have to deal with racism. We're going to have to deal with politics. We're going to have to deal with, with quality versus quality in church. We're going to have to deal with depression. We're going to have to deal with, with suicidal issues amongst pastors and people in ministry. We're going to have to deal with marital problems. We're going to have to deal with our kids being bad. We're going to have to deal with our life not going the way that we want it to go. See, the rain's going to come sometimes in your life, and the streams, they're going to rise sometimes in your life, and the wind is going to blow sometimes in your life. But can I tell you, the difference is where your hope is built on. Watch the rest of the scripture. All this happened, and I love this part. It says, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on rock. This morning, my hope and my prayer is this, is that your foundation is not built on the things of this world, but your foundation is built on our hope. And our hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. Watch this next scripture. I love this next scripture because it goes on, and, and God, Christ has just told this story in verse 28. It says, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. It says, verse 29, because he had taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. He's saying, hey, Christ did not teach like a bunch of lectures and a bunch of rules and a bunch of regulations. He did not go through all this list of things. He taught like somebody who knew what he was talking about. And here's what I love about Christ in this story. The thing that I love about Christ in this story is this, is because he spoke with confidence. He said, if your hope is built on my words and if you listen to them, you will not fall. Imagine if the church was like that. We're not like that. This, this is the way. Let me tell you what the church is like. Watch. We're about to get some emails, Quentin. You're about to get a lot of emails. I promise you. Quentin at NorthChurchRockMart.com. Watch this. Let me tell you what's going to happen. This is the church right here. Watch. You ready? If you vote Democrat, then you don't love Jesus. If you vote Republican, then you love Jesus. Brian, stop talking. <laughs> Watch. Here, here we go. Here we go. I want to go to a black church. I want to go to a white church. I, I, he, he, if, 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 if you are in an interracial marriage, then you're outside of the will of God. I saw you at Walmart last week. Why didn't I see you at church? See, we, we, we built our faith on that. 
That's who we've become. We get on Facebook and all of a sudden we become scientists and we think we know everything about everything. And then all of a sudden we become childhood counselors and we're trying to tell people how to raise their kids while our kids are sitting up there punching holes in the wall. And we become marriage counselors, but you and your spouse argue every single day and you sit up here and you're trying to tell somebody else how to run their life and how to run their marriage. And your life is not, you don't even believe it because you're not living it. I remember a pastor friend of mine told me this. He said, the biggest problem with, with the church in preaching about sin is this. Is that we don't believe that people will come to Christ through conviction of sin. We preach about love because people love to hear about love. But we don't preach about sin. Or if we do, we whisper about it. You shouldn't see it. But if you do, God loves you. Sin is bad. But God is good. Imagine if the body of Christ preached and said, racism is bad no matter what color you are. Imagine if the body of Christ said, we worry too much about other people's sin and we don't worry about the log in our own eye. Imagine if the body of Christ said, sin is sin, but God can still save. And imagine if we didn't whisper about sin, but we shouted from the rooftops, how many people would understand that God loves you even in your mess. God will pick you up in your dirtiest place and give you his best and clean you off and use you like you are his own. But the problem is this. Come to my church. Listen, you got to stop doing what you're doing. God loves you. And we miss it. I preach with confidence, whether it be about sin, whether it be about the love of God. Because so many times throughout the word of God, he's proven himself true. Watch this in Daniel chapter 6. He shut the lion's mouth. In Judges 16, he extended grace to a sinner. In Daniel chapter 3, he saved them from the fire. In Exodus 14, he made a way out of no way. In Acts 16, he opened the prison door. In John 11, he brought life to the dead. In Luke 15, he allowed the men to walk. In Mark 4, he calmed the storm. And in Mark 16, he defeated death. This is why I can speak with confidence that God is good. And this is why I can speak with confidence that he is my hope. Because even when I thought there was no hope, God became my hope. I will never ever doubt God. I remember when we were going through this whole COVID thing, it was about three o'clock in the morning. I was asleep. I was out. My wife was up. She was doing her school work. And we heard a loud thud. We didn't know what it was. Or she didn't know what it was. And next thing I know, I hear my wife screaming my name at the top of her lungs. My daughter, Aviana, she gets febrile seizures and she had a febrile seizure at, it was like 310 in the morning. My wife, she was debating whether or not she's going to stay up and do her schoolwork. She decided she's going to stay up and do her schoolwork. Thank God that she did because minutes after my wife picked my daughter up, she began to throw up. And if she had not been there, my daughter would have aspirated. Scariest moment of my life. The second time. And my wife took my daughter to the ER and my daughter, she was fine. But it was a scary moment, and I began to see myself live on what ifs. And I had to draw from my confidence that God is too good to allow something bad to happen to my baby. And I will never forget that moment when God spoke into my heart. I got this. And it was like at that very moment, everything around me that was shifting my faith, my hope, my my everything that was shifting at that moment, it became solid. Because God said, I got it under control. Can I tell you something? That maybe your children are out there and they're out in the streets and they're wilding out. Maybe your marriage is having problems. Maybe you're going through your own thing. Maybe your anxiety is picking up. Maybe you're losing hope. Remember that the same God that carried you through the last storm is the same God that's going to carry you through the next one. I can say that with confidence. Watch this. Mark 16, he defeated death. Death thought it had won. And he remembered where his hope was. And that is why I can say with authority 
in confidence that my hope is built on nothing less. Come on up here, Scott. North Church, here's the reality. We are living in some very crazy times. Some very crazy times, and just when we thought that it was over, here it is, and it's ramping up again. Here are these numbers, and here's the statistics, and here's, you got to do it this way, you got to do it that way, here's, here's this and here's that, here's what you got to do, here's how you got to handle it. And we're living in some times where tomorrow is not promised, but here's the thing that is promised for tomorrow, that as long as it's in the hand of God, it's going to be okay. 1 Peter 5.10, it puts it this way, it says this, it says, in the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. The song in verse 4, I'm skipping verse 3, but the song in verse 4, it makes this promise so come to life when it says this, when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, Faultless stand before the throne. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. That's my hope. Is that one day all this is going to be over? That one day that God is going to come and he's going to split the clouds open and that a trumpet's going to blow and I'm going to be able to stand before my daddy and I'm going to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Hebrews 10, 23, it puts it this way. It says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Listen to me, North Church. Let me tell you something. If you take one thing away with you today, it's, I hope it's this, is that God is faithful and he is our hope. But I want to ask you a question. I want to leave you with a question. And here's the question that I want to leave you with. It's very simple. Watch this. Here it is right here. It says, where, what is your hope built on? That's my question for you this morning, North. What is your hope built on this morning? Is it built on, oh man, I'm going to go to church Sunday and and they're going to give me this, this, this message that's really going to hit my heart. And they're going to give me this message that, you know, man, I'm, I'm going to go out there and, and, and I'm going to be on fire. Or, or is, is your hope built on, and, and let's just be honest, and this is not about vaccine versus not vaccine. Is your hope built on a vaccine or not having a vaccine? Is your hope built on a political party? Maybe your hope is built on your race. Is your hope built on the number that's in your bank account? Is your hope built on the fact that you are a healthy person? How, how about this? Is your hope built on the fact that you know how to say amen at the right times when you're in church? Is your hope built on the fact that you read your Bible every day and listen to worship music? Where is your hope built? What is it built on? I want to tell you one thing that I know is true. One thing that I can say with authority and confidence is this, is that if your hope is not built on Jesus Christ, you're going to sink. Every single time. But this, how do I build my hope on Jesus Christ? Listen, here's how you do it. You ready? Every single day of your life, you take your life and you place it in his hands. May I do that? No, 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 no. Listen to me. Listen to me. Does your faith change with the numbers? Does your faith change every four years? Does your faith change depending on who you're around, whether it's black, white, whatever? Does your faith change when your marriage is going good or going bad? Does your faith change when you're having a good day versus a day where you're fighting your depression? See? I had to reach this point in my life. I had to reach this point when I was going through all this hell with this COVID stuff. And I had to say, God, I can't fix it. So I'm going to place it in your hands. As the worship band plays, I want to extend something to you. This altar is open. If you need to renew your hope, if you need to be reminded that God is still good, we want to pray with you. 
or you can pray right where you are. But I also want to encourage you of this is remember hope has a name and his name is Jesus. Let's stand and let's worship this morning. And all the earth shall your praise Our hearts will cry His bones will sing Great Shall your praise hearts will cry, its bones will sing. Vince and the worship band a round of applause. I know uh, it takes a lot to come up here and give your heart and your mind and your soul after the weeks that these guys have had. Sorry, trying to fid fidget with this thing. Vince's head is bigger than mine. I don't care what he says. <laughs> uh, you know, really take what he said. I'm going to challenge you a little bit more. I'm gonna, When you wake up in the bed tomorrow, before you even set your feet on the ground, so I ask sit there and say a prayer say God before my feet hit this ground I'm going to ask that my feet are planted in hope that I plant myself in you before I go throughout this day and the biggest thing we do as Christians is once we get planted in that hope and we're, we're rock solid we're going to have a great day we'll get on Facebook first thing and the first bad news article or the first COVID number comes through and it washes that hope away or we get the first phone call or the first person at work makes us mad and it washes that hope away we can't let it do that. we got to remember where we're founded in, remember where we're rooted at, and that's in the hope in Jesus Christ. So don't let anything take away your hope, because nothing can. We, we may be in this world, but we're not a part of it. We're our hopes found in Christ. we just we got to keep reminding ourselves of that. Uh, next is the extension of our worship. Uh, it takes a lot to make sure that we're staying Scare me. <laughs> it takes a lot to make sure that we're staying on live stream. Uh, as Vance said, we got a lot of families out. Uh, 
dealing with COVID, uh, been exposed to COVID, uh, just different situations. So we want to be able to stay, uh, stay online with those guys. That takes money. Uh, coming here, obviously, power takes, uh, takes money. Georgia Power don't care about our yays and amens, unfortunately, like we do. But, uh, and uh, obviously, if you look around, there's still a ton of stuff that needs to be done within this church. And we've said it a thousand times, but I'll probably say it a thousand more. This church is fully funded by our faithful tithes and giving. So we ask you guys that if you would dig a little bit deeper and really show God that we're being faithful to him and we want to see this church go outside these four walls. That we want to be able to reach this community. We want to be able to reach Rock Mart. We want to be able to reach North Georgia like never before. That eventually we want to blow this place wide open. And we want to show the world what Jesus Christ is all about. Amen. So you can give up here in our offering buckets. Uh, cash or check. You can give on NorthChurchRockMart.com. Uh, there's a simple button up there. Just hit give now. Or we got this cool uh, app. It's called Givelify. Uh, Brian, raise your hand. Brian would be more than happy to show you how to operate. He's an expert at it. <laughs> pulls up your location. To All you got to do is pull up your location. Pulls up North Church. Same thing. Yeah, give now. It's real simple. A uh, couple of announcements. We ain't got many. Children's is back this week. So thankful those those kids i know they're excited about it uh bible study i know we had kind of a condensed version and we had uh, like a prayer meeting the week before we'll be back in full-blown bible study i promise you if i have to do it sick i'll do it sick this week but we will be back in full-blown bible study uh this wednesday night at 6 45 so join us online uh I'm going to challenge you guys this week, so be ready. I got a challenge. I got something I want us to do as a church. Uh, so be ready for that. Be in prayer. Uh, and I know we said we were going to do students tonight, but we talked, we prayed. We still have a lot of COVID. There's a lot of COVID running, running rampant in Rock Mart and Cedar Town. So we're going to delay it one more week just to be safe. Uh, there shouldn't be any reason we won't be back ramping it up next week. Uh, so we invite your friends back out. You see a student that's missing, call them, ask them where they're at. Tell them we're opening the doors back up next week. Make sure they get them here. But I think that did you want. You got anything you want to announce? September 17th, downtown Yeah, I couldn't Dallas. remember the date. <laughs> Our Common Ground Worship Band, we're opening up for I Am They. Don't have any details on costs, but it's usually really fair. Downtown Dallas, right across the street from South Pizza. I got that announcement. That's all I got. All right. All right. I'm going to say a prayer over our offering. Say a prayer over you guys. Remember, don't let this message die inside aside these four walls. There's a lot of people that need to know their hope can still be found in Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to say a prayer, and we are dismissed. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we come for today, God, I just ask, Lord, you bless our tithes and offering as we extend our second part of our worship service to you, Lord. God, I ask that you bless it and you multiply it, not only within this church, God, but within our own financial lives, God. God, that we be able to see that, that we can bust outside these four walls. That, that like Scott said, that ministry is more than just Sunday, God. God, that we be able to bless this community. We be able to bless this nation, and then we remind them that Jesus is King, God. God, we ask that you bless each and every one in this building. You bless each and every one watching online, God. The ones that are out sick, God. God, you begin to heal their bodies. You touch them wherever they're at right now, God. You come into their homes, God. You remove the COVID. You remove the the sicknesses, whatever they're fighting right now, God. You begin to heal their bodies wherever they're at. Touch them, God. God, we thank you and we praise you for the service that you gave us this morning, God. We ask that we apply it to our hearts and our minds and our souls and we take it with us and out of this nation, God, and spread your world, uh, spread your word like fire into the nation, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.